I changed my accent so that when I walked into audition rooms, I didn't have to think about doing the American accent. Wow, that's dedication. Um, You've so, been method acting for two years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's a lot of people that I worked with that didn't know that I was Australian. And I was like, I'm actually Australian. Hey everyone, welcome to the Convo Couch. Today we've got actress and writer Taylor Hoborough. Thanks for coming on. No, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. The first time that I decided that I wanted to be an actor was when my dad actually took me to the theatre when I was, I think I was about 10, maybe 11 years old. And he took me to see uh, Charlie's Angels, the, the original one, not the one that's just come out, obviously. Yep. Um, and I remember walking out of that movie theatre and thinking, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Wow. But, um, and I, it was so... It was so real. Like, it's not kind of like, that would be cool. It was like, that's what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. So that one movie changed yeah. your life? Yeah, yeah. And I don't know why it was Charlie's Angels. I don't know what yeah, about that. all the movies. Yeah, it's not like it's a <laughs> real, like, heartfelt movie or anything. It's just three women, I don't know, kicking ass, I guess. So what happened when you told your parents that you decided to drop your psychology degree and went <laughs> off into acting? Um... Uh, Well, they tried to be supportive. Um, wow. <laughs> okay. But, but it's, I mean, it's, they, they cared about me, so they were worried that, you know, they didn't want me to fail at something. They wanted me to take a safe option. And it, they, for a while, they were always like, oh, you can go back, you know, have you figured out what you want to do yet? And they'd slide in little comments like that. And But now they're very supportive of what I do and they they, they realise that that's what I wanted to do with my life they realised that was my passion that's what I love the most so now they're like completely behind me and they support me I went over to the US um, to study acting at a school over there and I also did improv um, I got into improv I love improv now it's terrifying but it's so much fun yeah um, like improv comedy yeah wow yeah, comedy okay. yeah that's tough yeah because yeah, I mean the first time I did it it was it was crazy It was crazy because, like, you get up there with a couple of people, you have nothing, right? You don't have a script. You don't have anything planned. You're just kind of standing in front of an audience yeah. <laughs> being like, I'm going to entertain you. Yeah. Um, and then... And make you laugh. <laughs> yeah. And then the audience, you ask the audience for, like, a suggestion, maybe a word or something like that, and then you have to create kind of like a half-hour show from that one word. Wow. Um, so it's terrifying, but... Was it just you by yourself up on stage? No, there's about, um, you know, five or six people up there you're okay. in like a team and so you can play off them yeah yeah you right. play off each other yeah that helps <laughs> yeah, it does, yeah. <laughs> Canada felt for me more like home than Australia ever did which was interesting yeah I think maybe because I was so in the entertainment industry over there like I was working all the time and I found like a real kind of like family um film community over there um and Yeah, I made, we made a lot of stuff. I made a lot of my own things over there, which was really, um, like, satisfying and really awesome experience. And Did you direct your own stuff or put it on YouTube? Or um, I haven't directed any of my own stuff yet. I, I want to in the future. Um, I think I need to learn a little bit more about that kind, that part of filmmaking. But I, um, I was involved in the writing and the producing side of things and then okay. acting in it, obviously, as well. And then, obviously, you have other team members that are coming in and collaborating as well, so different directors, cinematographers and... Um, but yeah, learning how to kind of put all my own stuff together gave me a bit of an appreciation of how much work actually goes into making something. When you when you read kind of like the breakdown for something, you you get a sense of if you understand what this character is going through, if you've been through something similar yourself, or if it's something like very, very for foreign. And if it's something similar that you've been through yourself, you understand the emotions or the circumstances surrounding it, because it's all, it's all human experience, right? So we all have some kind of connection to any storyline. And the most important thing is finding the similarity in what seems to be different And then, and then trusting myself enough to know that the humanity that I've lived through, the, my own humanity, is going to show up in the work. I used to overthink things a lot. You know, I used to be like, um, how, do I, how do I get to this character? How do I um, put this kind of mask on? And then through my work, I've realized that it's not putting something on. It's really about taking things off and letting truth and your own humanity come out through someone else's story. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, I try not to overthink my roles too much anymore. Um, just really asking myself the question, what do I know about this person's story and what truth can I bring to this person's story? Do you feel like sometimes you would write a bit of yourself into the character or no, not really? Um, 
Sometimes, depending on... If I'm writing something for myself, you can't help but write how you would think or how you would act. Mm -hmm. Um, If I'm writing something for someone else, it's a little easier to um, be objective and to detach from their storyline a little bit and make them someone that's a little bit different from yourself. Uh, But, yeah, I think I would probably i mean you want to you want to write something truthful so part of yourself is always going to come out into your work i want to learn as much as i can about the creative industry so everything that goes into uh making a film i feel like it's all gonna it's all gonna help in one my performance and it's also gonna help make production run a lot smoother you know if i have an understanding of what everyone else is doing the people behind the camera um I can help make their job easier as well. So, and I also have a, I also have a interest in writing. It's another creative outlet for me that, you know, it provides different satisfaction than acting does. Um, and I also love to get into <laughs> directing as well yeah. because uh, I've seen the way that directors can, um, you know, pull truth and really great performances out of other actors. And I'd love to be able to do that as well. Sense Memory is actually a uh, Canadian project. Okay. I did that when I was over there. And um, that one has probably been the most, I guess, one of the most satisfying projects that I've ever done. It was just a short film, mm-hmm. uh, but it it had a lot of, um, uh, it, it seemed to affect a lot of people. It, it centered around anxiety and uh, domestic violence. And it was it was based on the concept of sense grounding, which is a real life concept that, um, people who are suffering from anxiety used to help bring them kind of back down and calm them down again. And uh, I played this woman that was in the midst of an anxiety attack and every every time she tried to bring herself back again, she was getting flashbacks to the events that caused her to go into anxiety. So it's like this spiral that keeps going down and down and down. And the, the, the sense grounding, that technique, it involves... Um, seeing five things that you can see four things you can hear three things you can touch two things you can smell and one thing you can taste and it's meant to um kind of like ground your senses and slow your breathing down and um yeah help lower like the panic attack that you're going through and it was funny because um after that film screened and was released one of my best friends actually she watched it and she said to me once, she's like, I, uh, I woke up in the middle of the night in, in, a, in a panic attack. And she said, um, I remembered the film that you did and I employed that technique, the sense grounding. And she's like, it actually worked. So to think that, I think that was the most um, like humbling thing that I could do that while I was so grateful to do that film is it actually had real life effects and it actually affected people's lives in a positive way. And um, yeah, audience really liked it and I got, we got a lot of um, yeah good feedback from it. So that is, that's one of the reasons why you know you make art. You want you want to affect people. You want to affect people's lives. So to know that I made something that actually affected people in a positive way was um, yeah it was really it was it was kind of humbling. Yeah. I don't know. I seem to play a lot of like cult members. <laughs> really? I don't know why I get typecast as that. <laughs> oh, wow, it's yeah. an interesting yeah. typecast for you. Like I wouldn't imagine that just looking yeah. at you and just saying. I think it's like. I think it's like the red hair and the pale skin. I can get away with playing when I'm in costume. I can get away with playing very like innocent characters or okay. like the victims and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, some of the cult members that I've been able to play have been pretty fun. Like I did one recently in a short film called um, Under the Peach Trees, and it was a Australian short film, and it was about a um, set in the future as well. It was about a cult. And these two women, I played one of the women in it, were um, trying to escape from this, uh, like this compound kind of thing. And my role in it was uh, that I was I was playing like kind of like the older character, and the younger character, she was very um, she was very outspoken. She could get herself in trouble by the things that she was saying. And I think my role would have been was to um, like keep everything under wraps, keep her in control, while still trying to plan the escape for both of us to get out. Um, okay. So that was fun, and yeah. we filmed that out on a horse ranch out in just west of Sydney, which was um, 
yeah, it was really beautiful out there. Is when you're playing something for um, even just a few days and the role can be quite intense. Like when I was doing Sense Memory, that was quite an in, it, it was quite an emotional kind of role and it took a lot out of me. It was very exhausting. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's hard to just kind of like switch back out of it again and go home and after playing emotionally demanding roles and just to be happy again and, you know, to be full of like joy and it, it takes a little while to, to go back up, but, um, I've never, I've never found it, um, like I never found like to have like a lasting negative effect on me or anything like okay. that. Yeah. So it's relatively easy for you to get out of it. It just takes time. For yeah. You. I think because of the way that I approach the work as well, I don't, I'm not like, um, a lot of people say like method actors, yeah. how they become a different person. That's not how I approach the work. As I said before, it's, I, I bring my experience, my, myself to the role, mm. right? So it's never me becoming somebody else. It's always me revealing my truth um, in someone else's story. Mm. And I think that's the best way for me to be able to actually be truthful in the work and be vulnerable in the work and be honest. What are the main similarities and differences you find between Sydney and the US and Canada? Um, the US and Canada are very different in terms of their casting processes and things like that. Okay. In Australia, for example, you are required to be completely off book when you go into an audition. So you don't, you shouldn't have the script in your hand. When you walk into an audition room in Canada and the US, you're completely allowed to be reading off the page. Um, I think because their industry is so much more fast paced than Australia's in the fact that actors can have like four auditions in one day over there and sometimes they have less than 24 hours notice. So they're being um, reasonable in their expectations of what you can memorize in that period of time. Okay. Um, and they also, I think, I don't know if this is true or not, but this is what a friend of mine in the industry said over there. It's that their approach is a little different in the fact that they just want to see you as a person in the room. They don't want to see something that you've planned um, or like how you how you think the role should be played. When you walk into a room, if it's a director or a producer session or something like that, um, they want to see you as a person. They want to see who's going to be turning up on set, who they're going to be working with for three months. You know, they don't want to see this character that you've prepared. Um, which I, I kind of like that approach that approach better. Um, the Canadian and US industry obviously has a lot more money too. Mm, mm. So being on set can be a little bit different as well. Um, there's as a, in the catering? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the catering is pretty good, yeah. Okay. You just got to stay away from craft services for majority of the day. Otherwise, you just end up eating 10 cupcakes. But um, yeah, I actually I, I worked on a TV show over in Canada called um, Legends of Tomorrow, uh, DC's Legends of Tomorrow. It's one yeah. of those DC Universe superhero kind of shows. Yeah. And I was so surprised at how much money they actually had to spend on. For example, one scene was set in London in the 1850s, right? That Just one scene out of the entire episode. They had built an entire London street inside a sound studio um, with complete with like um, uh, old period set lights and um, cobblestone streets and just for one scene. That's Is that it. the one on your showreel? Uh, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was in like that was a, a really good scene. I would say. Yeah, that was. I was. Was I in like a like a Costume big dress and thing? Then and you're like screaming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. That's cool. It. Yeah. All right. That's um, a really good scene. Yeah. It was. It was really fun to play. It was really fun to kind of get to be on that size set it's a lot of work that goes into it and seeing it gives you a real appreciation of how hard everyone works over there and you can only really do it if you love it because i mean actors have it easy we are there we we sit around till they say we're ready for you and then we come and we do our thing and then we <laughs> we leave again but they're there from like you know four o'clock in the morning until four o'clock the next morning um, yeah it's a pretty intense industry yeah yeah the crew work really really hard yeah. Yeah, I different. forgot how to speak with an Australian accent. When I came back, I had to relearn it. Okay, did you understand people? Yeah, yeah of <laughs> okay. course. Because yeah. uh, I don't understand people sometimes when I go back to my home country. You know, oh, really? It's, yeah, a little bit embarrassing, but... Yeah. Where are you from? Singapore. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's an interesting language.